Tottenham, right? Tottenham are considering sacking their interim manager. Can you believe how wild that sentence sounds? And yet, it is completely and utterly the correct decision. That 21 minutes that we saw at St. James's Park yesterday was the worst 21 minutes I've ever seen from any Premier League football team ever in the history of the game. That is how bad it was. It is the worst period of football. It is the worst extended period of football. The first half of the first half. I have never seen a more shambolic 21 minutes in my life. It was woeful. It was totally disjointed. And most worryingly, it was completely apathetic. Tottenham are all over the place. They are a managerless, directionless football club. And it doesn't make sense. How can you be that bad when nominally at least you are competing for the top four? You finished in the top four last season. You have some fantastic players at your club. Like how can you be that bad when you have Harry Kane in the team? How can you be that bad when you have Hun Min Son in that team? Like Hugo Lloris, Christian Romero. They are World Cup winners. And yet, they are at the epicentre of one of the most embarrassing displays of football that the world has ever seen. The list goes on as well, by the way. Perisic has finished, what, second and third in the World Cup during a fairly, not an exaggeration to say, is it? Wonderful career that he has had. Eric Dyer, I think he's a terrible footballer, but, you know, he's been an England squad regular. That Porro geezer is going to cost 40 million quid. There is talent in that team, and yet they are churning out these results. And the most worrying thing of the lot is nobody looks bothered where's the passion where's the pride in the shirt where's the fight where's the hunger where's the honor of wearing the Tottenham Hotspur badge it just doesn't exist in those players and most worryingly for Tottenham Hotspur the club it felt like that performance at St James's Park was a seminal moment in football it was a sea change it signifies something so much bigger than simply Three points. It's representative of a shift. I think Newcastle now can honestly believe that they have displaced Tottenham. They've displaced them as what Tottenham are supposed to be. Tottenham are supposed to be the club that are competing for the top four, getting into the Champions League, potentially winning silverware, in theory, of course, I'm talking about. But yet... It's Newcastle who are getting to cup finals. It's Newcastle who are going to be playing in the Champions League next season. It's Newcastle who are currently in the top four. It's Newcastle who are playing this shock and awe football, something that Tottenham fans really pride themselves on. It's Newcastle who are direct. It's Newcastle who are fast and ruthless and destructive. It's not Tottenham. Tottenham aren't that. Tottenham aren't the contender anymore. There is a shift and sometimes we have to acknowledge it and it doesn't come naturally to us. Me in particular, I feel like I can be particularly resistant to change. You know, I've said that no matter what happens for the rest of our lifetime, Manchester United will always be the bigger club compared to Man City. And I do stand by that. I think it's impossible, but a lot of people would disagree with me on that front. Tottenham have a very rich history. You know, the first team to win the double and they have had some glorious teams over the years but they are so far off it at the moment. And Newcastle, it was a statement victory from them. And the damage that they inflicted on Tottenham and Tottenham's chances of playing in the Champions League, I just think the balance of power is gone. It isn't North London anymore. It's it's North East England. The table agrees with me. Just look at the table. Like Newcastle are now what? Six points clear of Tottenham. They have a game in hand and they have a vastly superior goal difference. On top of it all, they just smashed them up 6-1, scoring five goals in 21 minutes. The worst 21 minutes of football that you will ever see. How can you possibly argue that it isn't Tottenham now? How can you possibly argue that Tottenham are still Tottenham and haven't been displaced by Newcastle? I just don't think you can. I just don't think it's possible. And when you think about the many, many, many men, men, no, when you think about the many moments over the last... 
however long, when you talk about Tottenham, just think about all of the moments that I thrive and relish talking about. What I believe is the definition of Tottenham Hotspur. I always talk about it, right? Two League Cups since 1991. The last time they won the league was closer to the Victorian era than it is to today. There are so many things that I love to flag about Tottenham. When Chelsea slapped them up 4-0 twice in three days. There are so many things that I like to talk about when I talk about Tottenham. But I don't think any of those things. Nothing. Like, do you remember when they got done by Zagreb? They got battered 3-0 by Zagreb the day after Zagreb's manager went to prison. That's Tottenham, isn't it? It's so good. But none of that, not the Chelsea three, not the Chelsea four nil twice in three days, not the two League Cups since 1991, not the fact that they won the league way back. You know, we were not. It's going to be a hundred years fairly soon. It's what happened yesterday at St James's Park. Nothing compares to that. I genuinely believe that that is the worst thing. Look, all of those moments. I'm sure that for Tottenham fans. They're painful, but each of them can be explained as maybe a minor hiccup or an inconvenience along the way. This is a shift. Tottenham and Newcastle have swapped. This is a a redefining of Tottenham Hotspur. And that is why this is more significant than anything. That 21 minutes, it's a new low for Tottenham. The pits, and in my opinion, it is unrecoverable. And that is why... They are considering bringing Ryan Mason back. The Stellini experiment simply hasn't worked. His tactics were all over the place yesterday. They were totally brainless. How can you play a high line if you aren't going to press? If you aren't going to put pressure on the ball, you can't have a high line. Because if you aren't going to if you aren't going to stop the, the midfield playing clever balls over the top, your high line is going to be exposed constantly, isn't it? So you don't press and you have a high line. Like, that's just insane. And look, of course, you know, there were some fantastic moments from Newcastle and obviously Joe Willock's pass is going to get a lot of uh, a lot of admiration as well it should. It was a great, you know, it was a great pass, great vision. But my God, Tottenham allowed him to do it. If the Tottenham midfield were harrying and hustling and forcing Willock, you never get the opportunity. Or if the defence were 10 yards back, you never get the opportunity. Tottenham deserved the assist as much as Willock does. Tottenham deserved the assist for Willock as much as Willock deserves the assist for Isaac. It was just appalling. Like, it really, really was appalling. And Newcastle found it so easy. You know, stick a ball in behind, run straight onto it and score. And if you look at the goals that were scored, right, the second and the fourth goals, painfully similar from a Tottenham perspective, weren't they? Painfully obvious. Like, I love watching Tottenham concede goals. I I truly live for it. I love watching Tottenham get battered everywhere they go. But even I was frustrated. I was like, what are they doing? How can it be this bad? So I really do not know where they go from here. But that is a line in the sand. That is the moment. That is the very moment that something needs to change. And I think Daniel Levy now needs to take some responsibility. He owes those Tottenham fans an explanation. They are all over the place. He has made so many mistakes and I do feel like he gets away with it, particularly in the press. Like, if you think about what Tottenham have been great at over the past five years, if I were to say to you in a really simple way, say one thing that Tottenham are great at, I think the most obvious answer, and I think most people will agree with this, Tottenham are great at, one thing, scoring goals, right? It's the easiest thing. What, what, where do Tottenham excel? What part of Tottenham's anatomy is its best? Scoring goals. Okay, I think we all agree, right? Daniel Levy, whilst having one of the most effervescent and exciting forward lines, you know, he's had Harry Kane there, he's had Hummin Son firing at various points. You've had Richarlison coming in, okay, it hasn't worked, but it was an interesting signing. They had Gareth Bale there. Scoring goals is what Tottenham have been good at. And do you know what Daniel Levy has done? He has linked up Harry Kane and his merry men, the forward-thinking players, the goal scorers at Tottenham, he has linked them up with, arguably, yeah, it's fair, the three most defensive-minded managers in world football. 
three most defensive-minded managers. So Daniel Levy has seen that Tottenham's brilliance lies in scoring goals and has yet decided that the managers to link up those goal scorers with is Jose Mourinho, renowned for his defensive approach. Nuno Espirito Santo, I mean, who, who takes defensive <laughs> negative football to a different level. You know, Mourinho does have the eye for the cut, the thrust of the game, the clever, incisive football. Like Nuno Espirito Santo is a defensive manager. That's a fact. And then Antonio Conte, who at Tottenham really did embrace the traditions of defending. So Daniel Levy has made mistakes. Why are you partnering? And, and also what that means is, that means that those managers are going to focus on the defence when the defence isn't very good. You know, you've got, you've got Eric Dyer back there, Christian Romero. People were telling me how good he was last year. He'd been average, I think. I think he would really be exploited at a different team. Hugo Lloris, dreadful. Ben Davis is back there, dreadful. Porro, people are telling me he's dreadful. Emerson Royale became a laughing stock. Like, you've brought in a manager that is going to accentuate the defence when you have one of the most exciting forward lines in the world. And Daniel Levy needs to own this now. And I don't mean talking to the Cambridge Union. Did everybody see that? He had the time and the inclination to go and have a conversation with the Cambridge Union. Talk to the Tottenham fans. They deserve an answer here. Because that moment at St. James's Park for me, there's no coming back from that. There is no coming back. Like I've always laughed at Tottenham. But this is, this is it's almost rude to laugh at them now because they are finished. Totally and utterly done. Harry Kane on the score sheet again though. Can you believe that geezer? What a footballer he is. But the rest of them, an embarrassment. Can't say I haven't enjoyed this one. I hope you have as well. Thank you so much for joining me. And may I say to you, we are inching ever closer to 250,000 subscribers. If any of you are watching this not subscribed, please consider joining the community. It would be my honour to welcome you in. Cheers. Great talking about Tottenham, is it? I love it.